That came up quickly. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Welcome to What Are You Reading? It's Jane Tara, and I have a very special guest, Tanya Blanchard. Hello. Hi, everyone. Everyone Hi. knows her backlist of amazing, amazing historicals, including Letters from Berlin. Um, but you're here today to yeah. talk about your new book. I am. It's very exciting and she matches. I know. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Deliberate. <Yeah. laughs> it's, no, it's, so, it's, so, it's such a beautiful cover. It's absolutely stunning. And um, while we're waiting for everyone to come on, Let's hear about it. Talk to me about yeah, it. Yeah, sure. So this is a bit different, this one, from my other books. Um, I turn to my husband's family stories with this one and the setting is different. It's in the late Victorian period mm. to the 1890s in northern England, so quite a different mm. uh, setting as well. Um, so I really, really enjoyed uh, researching this book in the late Victorian period. So the story is about a young woman. Um, she's just come from teacher's college and joined her parents in a really small agricultural village mm. in the north of England. Um, and she's passionate about teaching and helping the young women and children in the district. But her other passion is fighting for the vote for women. Mm. So um, she, she sets up a local suffrage society, joins the national uh, suffrage movement, and this fight for the vote for women is set against the backdrop of the village and also London where mm. parliamentary, you know, halls are and all the power is. So that that's where the story is basically set and starts from. So this was your husband's great, great grandmother. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, okay. And tell me, how did you hear about her? Like, it, you know, because you always write from mm. family history yeah. and you've been doing inspired by your own family in the past. That's so right. you've at some stage heard about her and gone, hmm, yeah. there's a story in this. Yeah. So how did you hear about her? My father-in-law uh, loves his family history and mm. so he told me some great stories many years ago about the Blanchards who owned this pub in Durham in England mm. at the turn of the 20th century. And so, I, you know, I was really intrigued to hear about their, their passion and their, they were so proud of this pub. But I wanted to know about the publican's wife. Mm. What was her life like? And they didn't know very much about her at all. So this was his uh, great-grandmother, I suppose, my father-in-law's great-grandmother mm. I'm talking about. He didn't know much about her. I spoke to other family members. They didn't know too much about her. So I went and did the family tree, looked up a bit of information on Ancestry and found her in the 1891 census mm. where she was living at this pub but with her parents and she was also a school teacher, which I was really intrigued in. So how. the pub had come down her line. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It had come down her line. So how did you get from being, you know, there in the first place mm. and a school teacher to running the pub with her husband in wow. the later years? So wow, I love it, you yeah. know, and that's true storytelling, isn't yep. it? To yep. hear something like that and go, okay, I need to know more about this and you do a deep dive into family history. Um, do you have all the tools for family history, like you access to ancestry yep. and all of that yep. sort of stuff? So yep. you're going in and you're looking up yep. things and then suddenly this idea starts to grow yeah exactly i want to hear more about the the process <laughs> after that um but first of all we'll say hi to a few of these lovely people um wendy says hello sharon tanya hi. helen says hello she says i'm reading reinventing mm. emily brown by jody gibson and loving it i've never heard of that book but as you know if I haven't heard of something, I go back and make a note <laughs> later and check it out. So yep. thank you, Helen. Um, Sharon says, love the cover. Oh, yes. So do I. It's beautiful. Yes. And uh, just looking at this, okay, so <laughs> you're wearing blue, but just point out the earrings. Mm, yep. Look at that. Even earrings. got them yeah. coordinated. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a real, that that's a real author outfit there. <laughs> um Yvonne says, hello, girls, just finished Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth and we'll read Meredith Appleyard's Daisy and Kate next. I was just looking at that in the yeah. office, actually. Um, okay, so talk to me about what happens next. Once you have the the person, mm -hmm. you know, you've kind of got an image of this and, you know, this woman that you want to bring to the forefront of history and family history yeah. and what's next? Do you start like exploring 
um, writing a bit of her, trying to find her voice, or do you do the research first? Generally, I'll, I'll know what the general story is because I've done enough research then to work out what the big moments in her life were, mm. you know, births, marriage, you know, children, um, just stuff in, you know, birth, births, deaths and marriages and census records. So I know her, her basic story. So then I will actually go away and do some research. Mm. Um, and I discovered about the, the suffrage movement at the time as well. It's uh, all the big things about the Victorian era. There was mm. so much social reform. You know, there was um, medical and scientific and technological changes, uh, great advances. And the suffrage movement, which I discovered, was only in its fledgling stage at this point in mm. time. But it was actually teachers that were really involved in the movement mm. at this time, which I thought, ah, that's mm. really fascinating. Mm. It must have been interesting for you to be in a completely different era to yep. what you're used to writing yeah. in as well. Yeah. So, And do you find that enjoyable just to kind of oh, learn I've, as you go yeah, along? Yeah. Absolutely. And and when I'm learning lots of new stuff, I think, ah, oh, I wonder if other people know mm. this new stuff as well. Mm. So I want to include the stuff that I've learned into my story as well. Mm. One of the, I, I don't know who said it, it was an author that we were speaking to once said, um, you know, historical authors do so much research mm. but not much of it shows on the page That's and exactly shouldn't right. show on the, it, but it's the knowledge base that yeah. you have. And I think you really walk that line very well of like really delivering an era to the reader mm. without kind of going, look at everything that I've yeah. learned, you know. It's, yeah. like, <laughs> it's really yeah. hard to know what, what to keep, what to pull back on, mm. but, you know, I certainly have learned a bit more of that process over the books that I've done. Mm. Mm, okay, well, we'll come back to this mm. in a bit, but there's a look the cover, everyone. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell us what you're reading? Yes, okay. Show us one of one of the right. books you're reading. I just finished reading uh, this one, Kel Woods, After the Forest. It is a historical fantasy. Um, and what I love about this is it's a retelling of the fairy tales of Hansel and Gretel. Mm. But it's set in the 1600s in Black Forest, Germany. And what I loved is when I started reading this, it just took me straight back to when I was a child reading fairy stories. And so this is an adult retelling, I suppose, of a fairy story. Um, very fascinating, uh, whimsical, dark in places. And I, I really loved it, actually, for something really different. Mm. Um, and, and I love reading fantasy anyway. Mm. So this was two two of my favourite things combined together: history and fantasy. Do you, so you tend to stick to those genres when you're reading. Well, yeah. I, I read a bit of everything these yeah. days, but they're my two favourite things to read. Yeah. So that that was this one after the forest. Yeah. And this is Kel's debut novel, mm -hmm. um, and it was written fabulously, really beautiful to read. Oh, very yeah, cool. Really enjoyed this one. All right, well, I'll share a few of ours here. So uh, completely different genre, but we know you love him, Michael Connolly. Oh, yeah. um, so in this one, he merges two of his series. So it's number seven in the Lincoln Lawyers series, number 37 in the Bosch series, and wow. um, merges the characters Haller and Bosch together in this. And you know what you're in for with Michael Connolly. Um, very difficult to put down once you start. Yeah. And anyone who loves his books or is just discovering them and you've got a massive backlist to um, read, go and um, search him up on our Facebook. There is uh, um, an event that he did here or, or a Q&A or something that he did here. He is such a nice man as well. So, you know, megastar author, lovely, lovely guy and um, has been into the Better Reading Offices. Um, I haven't read this. I haven't. I've just been given this, you know. <laughs> so this is actually my Christmas reading. I'm going to pop that aside and that's one of the books that I'm reading over the holidays. Let us know what you're reading over the holidays. I know it's just creeping up so quickly, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to read that I'm over the holidays. I'm reading that one as well over the holidays. Are you? I also have it. It looks great. So yeah. I'm it's sitting down and having some time. You've got to have the space yeah. to read her yeah. and just, like, really – absorb it mm -hmm. and not be rushing anywhere it's a perfect holiday read yeah. i think yeah. speaking of holiday reads yes this one is fantastic oh it sure is mm. um the disappearance of astrid picard natasha lester it's it's classic natasha lester you know it's got france it's got fashion it's got Chula. glamour yeah oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely and yeah. strong women yeah and i really love this one because she's delved into a new era for her which is the 1970s mm. in new york 
with all its uh, wild, exciting freedoms and cutting edge fashion. And this is where the character of Astrid Picard begins her story. And I love the, it's a, like a three way storyline th weaving through the book. Um, there's, there's Misa Picard, who is like into war period, who was a muse for Christian Dior. And then we have a current day uh, setting in France as well with another strong woman. Mm. All these women are basically standing behind powerful, famous men of fashion of the time. Mm. Um, and so this is their story about stepping out of the shadows and owning their truth. And we see that their women's stories are a lot more than what, what history tells us. So I love this. Um, this is my favourite one of Natasha's yet. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah actually, I really, yeah. I loved it. Couldn't put it down. And, yeah. and certainly I think I'll go back to reading this one again because it really leaves you feeling empowered. Yes, yeah, mm. I agree. And mm. it's a great holiday read, yeah. definitely. Um, now, we have a few podcasts out. Were these our podcasts out? I don't know what this pile is here. But um, Big Mouth, Matt mm. Preston came into the office. Great read and a really great conversation with Cheryl. So go and check out that podcast. Um, this podcast, I have some tissues handy uh, because it was a very emotional, beautiful conversation about mothers, the love of, of um, you know, someone who has for their mother. Um, a Brilliant Life, sorry, <laughs> A Brilliant Life, Rochelle Unrich, and uh, she is actually going to come in and do What Are You Reading next week, so oh, keep an eye out for that. I think our review is up on the site as well, um, but it is a memoir of her mother who um, was a Holocaust survivor and um, fascinating, fascinating history that her mother had and beautifully written. So, um, and... Another really great podcast mm. that we've just got out, Unfinished Woman, Robin Davidson, who, I, you know, tracks as a travel classic, you know, but in this one she's kind of, I, I love when really great classic travel writers kind of do the geographical journey but they journey inward as well and she really does with this. Um, her, She lost her mother when she was young and um, she kind of explores the trauma around that and her incredible life, absolutely incredible life. Mm. And, uh, yeah, she's quite a woman actually. Yeah. Um, okay, now I'm wearing what are you reading t-shirt. Yes. So you can see this here. We have the Black Friday sale. Ah, yes, starting. Um, you know, I'm not a big shopper. I, I just <laughs> kind of yeah, and I don't sort of subscribe to the Black Friday thing, but we don't want to do another order of our merch before Christmas. We're just like, listen. If you're going to get Christmas presents and for your book-loving friends and yes. family, here we go. So we've got the T-shirts, we've got the mugs. It's from Friday until Monday, 30% off everything. You can go and check it out. Someone has just put a link in there. Brilliant. We've got that. We've got our, you know, mug, our mugs have done very, very yeah, well. People love them. Great. But we spent so much time, like, testing out, you know, <laughs> Yeah, because it's got to, you can't have a big mug. Yep. It can't be too small. It's got to be the right size it for does. your morning coffee. So what are you reading? Um, so check that out. Uh, what else have I got to talk about today? Oh, yes, the book stack. So if you want to win these books, Ooh. okay, there is a link here. We're just asking you a couple of questions about where you like to um see your authors so do you go to live events do you go to online events we just want to you know find out where you are going to see your favorite authors and you could be in the running for um or will be in the running to win a really great book pack all right so let me have a look at a few comments oh and the christmas party thanks Jax. <laughs> you're invited to the better reading christmas party Wednesday the 13th of December mm -hmm. and uh, at 8 p.m. it goes live and there's prizes special guests and lots of fun so please um, tune into that there's a link there and you can get a reminder for that as well. I can't believe Christmas is just around the corner. It's just 
bizarre. Have you got some time off over yeah, Christmas? Yeah, I think and, so, yeah. to do some reading, some yeah. reading for pleasure. That what are you? Great. So you're going to read Julia. I am but, going to read Julia. Yeah, what else are you reading I over the holidays? I don't know over the holidays what I'm going to read yet. Um, just getting to that point of finishing off my next manuscript and yes. then I'll have time to have a look at what I want to read next. But I think there are a few books that I've seen in the bookshop that I will go and have a look at and pick up. So your next manuscript, mm. what era is that set in? So this is um, sort of starts around 1907. So mm. um, this follows on with Hannah's story actually. Okay. Yeah, yep. Um, so she um, hits the, the suffragettes, so she's with the suffragette movement and we all know the famous suffragettes with the Pankhurst mm. and the militant action. So um, we follow the suffrage movement um, with Hannah through that period and into World War One. Mm. Um, so she's in London with all the action and uh, we see what happens to the women on the home front during mm. World War One and the other fights that they have to battle as well during wartime mm. um, and also then after the war as well um, to really stand the ground and, and be able to to be women in society. So will these be two be. standalones? They or, are two yeah. standalones. Yeah, but sort of. Um, but yeah, yeah. But, but the stories will follow each other. Yeah. A title yet? Oh, yeah, an under, an oh, undeniable voice. An Ooh, undeniable like voice, yeah. 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 yeah, very good. Mm. All right, so talk to me a bit about your writing yep. process. So how do you, do you hit a, um, do you plot it all or do you mm. just like you're a pantser and you hit a word count every day? Like how do you do yep. it? Yeah, um, I do have a basic uh, structure to begin with. Mm. Um, so I know where I'm starting and where I'm ending and the big points sort of structured in between. Yeah. Um, and, yes, I do have a word count. I try to write a certain number of words a week. Mm -hmm. The day doesn't always work. You know what it's like. Mm. Some days I might find out I need to do more research than others yes. when I'm in the middle of writing. Um, so then I don't hit that word count. So I try and get about 7,000 words done a week. A week. Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, just really, really get it kicking along um, mm. and tend to work maybe five, five days a week if I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you just go in like office hours? Yep, for, yep, yeah. yep, yep. All my kids have finally finished school. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> uh, so this year was the last year for me. So yeah. um, I can thankfully now just roll out of bed, hit the desk yes. with a coffee yep. and off. If I go and and sit those hours like sort of eight through till probably you know one or one o'clock in the afternoon and then my energy flags a bit and I'll take mm. that bit of a break and then that second creative burst hits sort of mid afternoon mm. so I'll work if I can sort of four till about eight mm. um, and that that's a really thing this book this yep. beautiful book yep. and uh, at the same time getting this next manuscript That's right. finished. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you go with you know juggling all of that yeah, all it's, the life? It's 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 tricky. Mm. It is tricky. Um I had all the best intentions when I went away on my author tour this month to write while I was away. I thought that'd be perfect time away from any distractions from family. But it's actually quite a difficult thing to do mm, to get back I can into imagine. that headspace. Mm. Um you're off promoting and that's a different part of your brain I suppose that's mm. being used. Um, so I didn't do too much while I was away, but since I've been back, I've been able to just hit the ground running and, and really get some good words on the page. Mm. So my tour has finished now officially and so I can then spend the next couple of weeks finalising this first draft. Mm, but there will be some more book events early next year, yeah. so keep an eye out for yeah. those, everyone, they because will. you might be able to go to one. Uh, Carolyn says... Um, hello to us both and that she has just read The Drowning by the multi-talented Brian Brown mm. who was in the office and, like, I really did fangirl a little bit. <laughs> Jill, hi, hello, ladies. Stacey said I read I read Small Things Like These and Foster by Claire Keegan over the weekend. Over the weekend. Wow. Wow. You had a weekend of reading yeah, or do you always reading. read that much? Um, do you do audio? Yes. Mm. Oh, well, I don't actually do the audio, no. Oh, I don't read the audio. But no, yes, no, no. Do you, do you listen to audio do or do listen? you just read? Well, I, yeah, I, I tend not to have a lot of time to do audio. I don't do as much driving as I used to. Mm. Um, so I tend to just read now. I, yeah. love, I love the feel of a book in my hand. Mm. Um, there's nothing quite like it. But I think if I was on the road a lot, 
Mm. Audio is definitely the way to go. Yeah, I'm I'm on the road to the Northern Beaches quite a lot, mm. so I've got the audio books yep. on. I love it. And I do my non-fiction in audio and then my fiction, you know. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, mm. yeah. I don't do fi- – I'm not a great fan of fiction mm. in audio. I like mm. to be holding that one and yep. imagining it myself. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I mm. might have to try some audio in the non-fiction and see how I find it. Mm. Mm. So tell me about the next book that you've got there that okay. you want to share with me. I'm share with you this one um i read this earlier this year it's war of hearts by tanya farrelly this is her second novel it's historical fiction set at the end of world war one or towards the end of world war one and i loved this tanya writes absolutely beautifully i was immediately immersed into the world of world war one um the western front and Mm. all of the, the you know gritty horror of that part of the war um, the story also involves a fantastic mystery around a small music box. Um, oh, cool. So Tanya really weaves this beautiful simmering mystery through the story um, and, and the heroine of the story of, is this beautiful uh, journalist in New York, uh, Grace Winters, who uh, finds the music box and tries to unravel this mystery and ends up in France um, and involved in the resistance movement. So mm. it's, a, it's a fascinating read at really fast pace page turning um and a fantastic conclusion very satisfying i love this one this is one of my favorite reads this year you do really good book reviews i felt (laughs) like we should have been filming that guys and then putting it up up across the platform like you know Uh, it's got really you know reeled in and then i remembered where i was yeah (laughs) that's good and what about the last one that you've got there this one here um at the foot of the cherry tree this is by debut author ali parker i loved this one this is based on her family stories yes on her grandmother's story Mm. who was a japanese war bride Mm. um having terrible trouble coming to australia so she was the first japanese war bride actually allowed into australia Mm. so it follows her grandparents story i suppose from the japanese and the australian side Mm. and the horrors of post-war um japan i didn't really know anything about Mm. japan at, at that time and its involvement really in the in the war from the civilian side of things. Mm. So I think it just adds that other piece to that whole story of what war was all about at that time. Um, so I really love this. And she has this most evocative scene of um, the bombing of Hiroshima. Yeah. Um, just spine chilling and beautifully written. So, um, yeah, if you, if you love my kind of books or family story kind of stories, I would recommend this one mm. as well. I actually have a copy of that mm. um, that I'm ke- – actually, I think I brought that one in. This is the one I've tucked away yeah. to keep. It was yeah. my mother-in-law was a child in Hiroshima when the bomb was dropped. Oh, my goodness. And uh, she actually suffers from radiation-induced Parkinson's wow. now and lost a lot of family members then. Um, so I, I really want to read this one and, but not – Sometimes you have to read quickly at work, you yes. know, and I just want to savour it. So yes. it's probably another Christmas I holiday. I reckon this is one. a great yeah. holiday read because you need a little bit of time mm. to really read through this properly. Um, so much of it um, is based on true story. Mm. Um, Ali's grandmother's still alive. Yes. Um, so that she had lots of information to draw on in the story. So that's what I really loved about this one. Beautifully mm. written. Oh, amazing. Mm. That's, yep, another great review yep. there. Sold. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, look, there are so many people coming in saying hello. Helen has your new book on the To Be Read pile. Thanks, Helen. Um, Natasha has finished The Hummingbird Project mm. by Kate Mildenhall. Yep, great read. Um, and Lola in the Mirror, mm. audio book. Okay, excellent. Um, enjoying Light at Lavelle and Mrs. Winterbottom's oh, Gap Year. Yes. Love Joanna yes, Nell's latest book. Wonderful. That's great. Mm. Um, I'm presently reading Out Your Feet in the Dirt, Girl, by Sonia Henry, another one I haven't heard mm. of. Very cool. I will make a note of that later too. Um, lots and lots of wonderful comments here. Um, currently reading Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. That's yeah. Christine um, by Benjamin Stevenson and absolutely loving it. Yeah, cool. Do you know I emailed him the other day because that's set on the GAN and I emailed him and it was the best out-of-office reply I've ever Gosh. received. He said, I'm sorry, it takes me a bit to get to um, my emails at the moment. I'm on the GAN. So oh, I was like, yeah, that's, that's a very cool excuse yes. for not getting back to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so all of these, I loved After the Forest too. Mm. That's Jay. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. 
Cheryl says, I enjoy stories about how women have worked in the background for years and finally get acknowledged. I'm reading Butterfly Collector and yep. enjoyed Bookbinder of Jericho. Tough ladies' lives in those days. Yeah, they were. Absolutely. So, um, for those of you who joined a little bit later, tell us about your book again. <laughs> yeah. So, this is based in late Victorian England, north of England in the 1890s follows the story of Hannah, a young woman who joins her parents in a small agricultural village. She's a teacher and she's passionate about changing lives for women and children but really is passionate even more about the vote for women. Mm. So she fights for the vote, um, sets up a local suffrage society and the national suffrage movement, she gets involved with it. And so the story is told against this small agricultural village in the north of England and also in London where all the big changes are happening in Parliament. Mm. And it's such an amazing read and, of course, you know, based on family history again, yep. but this time um, from your husband's side That's of right. the family. Yep. And uh, can I, it did have all the notes, didn't it? Yeah, it does yeah, have, all it the, have notes. the author notes. Yep. I yep. was reading those yep. as well. So it tells really, what's true. Yeah, and, yeah yep. fascinating author notes in there as well. Um, so if you haven't already, go out and mm -hmm. grab a copy of this. And, in fact, you know, even save it for Christmas and well, like have yeah it it's looks a like stunning Christmas. cover <laughs> and it is a really really great holiday read like take yeah. time out you know relax if you've got time from work off from work and um and grab your latest novel congratulations mm, and so when's your next one out um november next year so yeah yep. yeah yeah so, 12 months ah very exciting yep. so we'll see you back in then absolutely yeah until then Tanya Blanchard, thank you so much yeah. for coming by. Thank Everyone you. grab the book. We love it. And um, and we will see you all next week. Keep reading. Thanks so much.